Hello, I am Miss Jedediah Villia, your grade 8 English teacher. Welcome to today's first lesson. Are you excited for our first learning session? Before we continue watching this video lesson, let's first have some reminders. Number one, prepare your notebooks, pen, and your mojo. Be sure that you are in a comfortable place to study. Number two, focus on this video lesson. Be sure that you are free from distractions. Take note of the important details that you need and pause when you need to. Number three, be an active listener or viewer. Don't just sit there and watch. Answer if you must, even though it is weird for some. Read and answer out loud to practice your tongue in speaking in English and your eyes in reading. You may also ask questions to your teacher and don't be shy about it. Please have a moment to pray before you continue. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity to study. Thank you for our family and for our good health. Thank you that even if there is a problem before us, you still bless us with your love. We know that you have a plan even if tragedy comes. We trust you. Help us in our lesson today. Give us wisdom and humility. In Jesus' name, amen. Make sure that you have done the following before we start. You have read the preliminary parts of the module, which are the how to use the module and the expectations part. Also, be sure that you have answered the pretest and you have read the brief introduction. Let's begin our lesson. Do you know what a rebuzz puzzle is? Hmm. No, it may sound like it, but Rubik's Cube is different. A rebus is a puzzle in which words are represented by combinations of individual letters. Now take a look at this example. To unfold its meaning, look closely and think. Yes, this rebus puzzle means top secret. Now that's clever. What do you think is the meaning of this puzzle? It means first aid. Did you get it right? What does this mean? It means crossroads. Easy peasy, right? What about this one? Yes, it is, I understand. Do you? Now this one's tricky. It means painless operation. Why do you think? Yes, it's because it's the word operation without the letters P, A, I, and N. So it's painless operation. Let's try another one. What is this? Yes, it is a round of applause. That's fun, right? But what made you find out all the answers? Yes, it is through the clues. 
And our lesson is quite similar with the technique that you used in unfolding the meaning of the rebuzz puzzles. Our lesson today is about context clues. Now, what are context clues? Context clues are hints found within a sentence, paragraph, or passage that a reader or you can use to understand the meanings of new or unfamiliar words. There are four types of context clues that you can use to find the meaning of unfamiliar words. Number one is finding the word parts. A word has a prefix, a root word, or a suffix. I know that you have studied prefixes in elementary. There are prefix tables that you can copy in order to be familiar with the meaning of words by their prefixes as clues. So here, for example, the word downhearted has the prefix down, which means reduce or lower. So by looking at the prefix of that word, you can fully understand the meaning of the word downhearted. It's, it means very sad or lonely. You may pause this video to copy these tables. Now these are suffix tables that would help you understand difficult words. You may copy them for your reference. The next kind of context clues is looking for an unfamiliar word's definition within a sentence or paragraph. These are examples of finding the meaning of a difficult word through its definition within a sentence. For the first example, we can find out that the meaning of the word inspection is a methodical examination of all the equipment. We can also know that lethargic means having no energy to get out of bed. Hmm, I think you may be lethargic most of the time because of the quarantine. Chronological order is starting with the first thing and ending with the last. And illegible is a handwriting that is hard to understand. And for the last example, precarious means to be destroyed. That's harsh. Now the next type of context clues is by looking for examples within the sentence or paragraph. So for the first sentence, you see that vulnerable means young children, the elderly or handicapped individuals. Duplicity on the second sentence means dishonesty. Imagine finding out someone stole your diamond earrings and selling them. That's a catastrophe. Now celestial bodies are the sun, moon, and stars. And lastly, the ecclesiastics are priests, ministers, and pastors. The next uh, type of 
context clues is looking for the synonyms and the antonyms of the difficult word within the sentence or the paragraph. Now, what do you think is the meaning of the word idyllic? Yes, it is sunny, warm, and perfect. And what about continuously? Mm -hmm, very easy, it means all the time. And then animosity. Now, according to the sentence, it means hatred. And for the last word, remorse, it means shame. Easy. The words or the, the meaning of the words are all in the sentence already. Antonyms are the opposite meaning of words. So you can find out the antonym of Gregorius in the first sentence, right? So what is the antonym of the word Gregorius? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is quiet and shy. So Gregorius means loud and confident. What about the word picturesque? Its antonym is, according to the sentence, ugly. Then that means picturesque is a beautiful view. Lastly, what is the antonym of the word feral? Mm -hmm. In the sentence, it means friendly. So feral means unfriendly. So I hope that you understood all the types of context clues and use them when you read literary pieces. So as we remember all the literary pieces that we will be reading throughout this academic year will be about the Afro-Asian literature. So be ready on that and use the types of context clues when you read. This time, I will leave you to do your activities from your modules. Now, for your activities, please do activities one and two. And of course, take a screenshot or send them the pictures on our Google Classroom or send them via private messaging. And if you don't have any means to send them to me, you can always, always private message your teacher. Of course, always be aware that honesty is still the best policy. So I know your tricks. I know that you sometimes send uh, um, answers to your classmates. It's very easy to do that, but honesty and integrity are still important in our class. So no cheating, no cheating. I can always, always find if you cheat, all right? For activity one, this is the instruction. You can find that in the module. And you have to answer and explain your answer. Mm -hmm. And then fill in the table. For activity two, this is the instruction. And then you also have to fill in the tables. And you must uh, do these activities after activities one and two. Of course, you have to answer, check your understanding part, the post test, and of course, the reflection. Um, I require you to have your notebooks in English, but if you do not have the new notebooks, you can always use the old ones, okay? Don't uh, ask your parents for money or allowance to buy a new notebook. All right, that's all for today, and see you again next week. Thank you for watching.